morning YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how to do something that will just transform all of your home cooking. I'm going to show you how to make homemade bone broth. It is easy, it is delicious, and you're going to love this stuff. Alright y'all. Maybe it'll be better than all my... <laughs> <laughs> we are making bone broth. And uh, it's kind of funny. It's really gotten hugely popular recently. But this is stuff that, at least around here, people have been making for generations, right? So right here, this, let's see. That is just a big bunch of fresh parsley. And I'm taking it stems and all, because the stems have a ton of flavor, y'all. So stems and all, I'm putting about half of that bunch in a great big stock pot. Use Okay, let's talk about the pot for a minute when you're making broth. Um, you don't want too big a pot. You, you want just, just enough pot that you can surround it with water just to cover. However, I like this one because it's actually a, a spaghetti pot. It makes it easier to deal with when you're handling hot liquids. You can simply drain it just like that. All right. But normally, you would just pick whatever pot you have that's big enough for your ingredients, um, and then you just barely cover it with water. Now here are our ingredients. Um, start with one whole chicken, right? <laughs> Picked up the bay leaf and he's gonna go in here just like that. We have about two stalks of celery. I trimmed those pretty small because we were using them for something else. This is beef back ribs, okay? And I, I chose these because lots of bone, a lot of cartilage, and then a lot of connective tissue, which as this simmers, most of that's gonna melt, right? We're gonna end up with just the bone. Bone has a lot of calcium in it. So I just have two pieces. I'd say that's about a pound and a half. All right, to get nice, rounded, deep flavor, I've got two fresh pork hocks, okay? So if you go to the grocery store, you can find smoked ham hocks. <clears throat> These are just fresh, raw, not cooked, not smoked. And then to this, and this is really so, so simple. All right, I have about a tablespoon and a half of peppercorns. Da -da. Whole peppercorns. Six or seven cloves of garlic. That's about half a head of garlic. I just peeled them and those are gonna go right in there. I have two bay leaves right in there. And about a tablespoon of kosher salt. Now, I had somebody commenting on a broth video Oh, it's been a few weeks. And they're saying, never add salt to your broth. Wait until you are cooking and whatever. So don't season it. The argument was, don't season it until you're ready to use it. I disagree. I think it all tastes better if you lightly season each element as you move along. So yes, I add a little bit of salt to my, to my broth. Of course, that means I will use less when I'm actually using the broth. This broth is destined for French onion soup. Now, traditionally, traditionally, ah, typically, I do a prime rib at Christmas, and then I take all the leftover bones and stuff, and I make beef stock, and then I make French onion soup for New Year's. This year, there wasn't enough left. <laughs> and I wasn't gonna worry about it until one of the kids was talking about how important the French onion soup tradition at New Year's was, and I'm like, oh, guess it became a thing for them. Alrighty, guys, hang on, I'm gonna rinse my hands real quick and show you what we're looking at. All right, let's get rid of this cutting board. If you're working with raw meats, try to keep everything on a cutting board to minimize the cross-contamination. Okay, here we are. I am simply going to add, there we go, that's better. I'm gonna add enough water to just cover my ingredients and I'm going to turn it on low and only barely simmer. I intend to let this go most of the day, right? But I'll show you what it looks like once I get all that going. Okay, nothing's happening yet. It's not very interesting, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. So I just filled it till it uh, water just came to cover, and I've got it on medium-low heat. 
Um, when you fill it with water, use cold water. You want to bring everything up to temperature at the same time. Um, and don't crank the heat up, even to get it going. Just trust me. This is going to take most of the day. It's going to take almost no work because this is all I'm going to do. I'm going to tweak the temperature so it stays at a bare simmer uh, with almost no movement. That'll help keep our broth nice and clear. Uh, might skim it a little bit when the fat starts to rise. Other than that, I'm going to go read my new book. I'm sorry it's dark in my kitchen. It's actually been so, so dark and gloomy outside for the past few days I haven't been able to shoot. So anyway, I wanted to take a second and just show you all this. Can you see this movement right here? Is that showing up? That's really as hard as you want to let this go. Okay. Now if you want to, you can take a spoon and just skim off that foamy stuff. And other than that, just let this keep going. Just skim it like that, okay? The fat will also start to come out of the meats that are in here, um, and it'll rise to the top, and you can skim that off the top as well. Uh, that doesn't do anything except make sure that you have a nice, beautifully crystal clear broth when it's done. And you don't let it boil hard because that will emulsify the fats, and it won't really change the flavor, but it'll make it kind of cloudy, okay? So we want it nice and clear. We want to develop all those flavors. We want to give it as long as possible for everything to work its magic. All right, we're just gonna go be patient now. I did want to show you all this. Um, so this has had about an hour and a half. Um, and I, all I did was, why is this so blurry? All I did was pull the chicken out um, because the chicken breast itself is now fully cooked. If you let it go any longer, or if you let your pot boil hard, Mm. While it's cooking, the chicken will get tough and dried out. But if you pull it out at about an hour and a half when it's fully cooked, you can pick all that meat off of there and the dark meat from the thighs right here and throw the bones back in the pot to keep simmering. So that's what I did. I'm going to pick it, throw the bones back in. And then this, can we see? Turn it down just a touch too much. We want to keep a little movement, but not much. It is the fragrance. Oh man, it smells so good. And it's starting to get a nice, deep, rich color, both of which are very good things to have. Alrighty, I just turned my pot off. I think it went about eight hours, give or take. Um, and the only thing I did to it was make sure it stayed at just a bare simmer. And I also uh, <laughs> Skimmed, couldn't get the word out. Uh, a whole bunch of fat off the top. Okay, so the pot is sitting over here. I pulled the strainer section out. So here's the all the solids, and then here I'll show you this in a second. Because I'm going to pour my broth into these jars, and then I'm going to stick this in the fridge because going to happen just like what happened in this bowl. So I was skimming the scum off the top of the pot and with it came a lot of the fat, not all of it, but a lot. And you see how the fat rises to the top? Well, gross. I just didn't want to put that down my sink. The same thing's going to happen. Oh, it's too dark to see, guys. Even there? Nope. I tried to move it closer to the window and we can't see. All right, so I'm gonna just pour this into the, into these giant jars. I'm gonna stash it in the fridge. And then what's gonna happen is the fat will congeal at the top and I can just pop it right off, right? So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. Cause you have a couple options here. First of all, the broth by itself is delicious. If you wanna drink bone broth, um, that's the way to do it. If you wanna make soup out of it, it's ready to go. It's absolutely phenomenal. It makes some of the best chicken noodle soup you've ever had. I'm going to make French onion soup with it, so winner, winner me, that just works. <laughs> or you can make the soup, or the stock rather, up to this point, and then tomorrow take the fat off, bring it back up on a, on a slow heat, bring it back up in temperature, poach another chicken in it, and you'll have consomme. How about that? All right, let me do the pouring and transferring so that y'all can actually see because it's dark and wintry and I don't have enough light. Okay, real quick. 
put it in my jars. I got a gallon and a half. These are half gallon jars. And I wanted to show you how much. Now I strained a lot of fat, skimmed it off the top, but look at how much fat is left. See, and it does all come rising to the top. Now, because I used that pasta pot, there was very little left as far as um, any particles. But if you can see in this one, this is the last one I poured out of the pot. And there were some very fine particulates in this. So here's the deal. If you want it to stay super clear, um, you need a shot of my sink. If you want it to stay super clear, go ahead and chill it pull the fat off the top, and then you can run this through uh, either cheesecloth or coffee filters. I use both, you know, depending. Um, but if you can look at this one, that's pretty daggone clear, right? That's not bad. All right, guys, there you go. That is how you make bone broth. That's one of the most delicious things that you can ever have. Um, it's also the start to some pretty rock star chicken broth on its own and it's the first step to making consomme so this is kind of a winner technique to know just across the board right right you need to do this you got it mm -hmm. all right a little auto focus all right this is the next day with our chicken broth and i wanted to show you what i was talking about yesterday the fat all rose to the top and it congealed and then you can just scoop it off just like that and well, probably be easier if I hadn't used a jar with a divot like this, but you can get pretty much all the fat off. And then look at the, do you see how thick that is? Does that show, honey? Mm -hmm. All right, that's the collagen that was released um, from the bones. And it's supposed to be, I'm not a nutritionist, so don't go like taking my word for it. <laughs> But it's supposed to be really, really good for your bones and your skin and your hair and your nails. So I at least like to tell myself that. All right, guys, there you go. I'll get the rest of that fat out of there, but there you are, homemade bone broth. That was easy. Hey, YouTube, thanks for watching. And if you thought that video was helpful, do me a huge favor. Hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get a notification whenever I post a new video. And if you have a second, hop on over to Patreon and check out how to support my channel even more. Again, thanks for watching.